Hi, this is Dr. Schmo from the Functional Neurology Center, and this is our Traumatic Brain Injury Technology Series. Today, I'm here with Dr. Nick Studholm. He's a practitioner in Denver, Colorado, and he's going to be talking to us about the development of a program called Spark Motion and how it can be used by providers to uh, uh, get analysis of gait and why gait is so important to assess when patients have concussion, TBI, dizziness. Uh, so I'm going to let him take it over and go from there. Great. Thanks. I appreciate you having me on today and uh, look forward to sharing a little bit about this. So we, I think we developed Spark in maybe 2008. It was when the first uh, iPad came out and okay. we realized, you know, you could screen capture things and we wanted to have something that you could um, capture something in a real time environment because many times you're, you're trapped by a treadmill or a uh, some sort of office setting. And so the, the iPad made that mobile and it had a big real estate, right? So it allowed us to be able to capture video effectively. And so we developed a, a motion capture app essentially, and it's really changed and grown from there. But that was the, the initial bit of three of us or four of us that got together and said, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we could measure this real time, look at it, and then turn and show the patient, yeah. here's what's going on. Very cool. So, so with the program, you can actually do a video on one side and have an analysis and then do like a post video. So say if you did a, a gait analysis, you could have them walk, do some sort of intervention, reevaluate, and then actually put those videos right next to each other and play them at the same time, correct? Absolutely. There's, there's quite a few features that are, I, I think there are a couple motion capture apps on the market, right? And, yeah. and so... If you humor me, let me just share a few things that d differentiate Spark. Yeah, um, one is that we use a cloud. And the reason that matters is simply as a practitioner, if you're storing lots of videos, it eats up your iPad. And so we have a HIPAA compliant software. We're the only HIPAA compliant actual uh, video analysis software. So we store it in a HIPAA compliant cloud, which is important for practitioners. But in addition, what that allows is if you've ever had, like, let's say you came in and I then analyzed your gate and then you came in six months later, I'd have to scroll through just a huge list of videos to find you again. Mm -hmm. And Spark Motion has a database software where each, each patient has, or, or person or whatever your client has an individual folder. So I can just open up folder, download Dr. Schmo and say, oh, look, this is, you know, date January, whenever, and here's today. So the speed of movement of videos is, is great, as well as they don't eat up space on the, on the iPad, and it's HIPAA compliant. So yeah, those cool. sort of things really help us then be able to do pre-post effectively and quickly in, in that environment. Yeah, so say if a, if a provider is working with somebody with TBI, like what, I mean, what do we want to capture with that person? I mean, what can we, what can we use Spark for? Well, I know there's a, you know, a lot of schools of thoughts on, on gait, and, and obviously we, gait is probably one of the main things we, we measure. Uh, I think anything you're doing that is a, uh, a reaction-based test, if, if somebody has a TBI, yeah. um, that doesn't involve um, necessarily having to touch the patient because it's hard to hold the iPad and do that, or if you yeah. had a stand, uh, you can capture a, a reaction. So it's balance, uh, gait. Um, maybe some of your cerebellar testing, those type of things. Yeah. And so, um, so you could even do DDKs. Like, absolutely. A finger tap, you know, finger to nose and then have that video and then do an intervention and have them on the other side of the yeah. screen and then do the same thing to be able to compare. Absolutely. And the neat part is, you know, you can just real time show that to the patient. Yeah. And I think sometimes they just don't perceive the difference or when you're watching gate and I know, Maybe in, in the neural world, you might consider an arm swing uh, of relevance, right? And somebody has a, a longer, short arm swing, but they don't feel that or see that. And um, so sometimes the education piece is, is really valuable. But um, we always, at least in our office, always are, are using uh, a gait eval on, on every patient. Because as you know, it's, it's something that's very reflexive um, for the most part. And we walk around, we think, I got to call this person today or I have this on my schedule. I'm not thinking arch lift, arch fall. Yeah. That type of thing. And so it's a pretty neat window into the nervous system to say, how much control do they really have in, at a level that isn't consciously driven, right? So yeah. we find you, it super you want, valuable. You want to just go through just some just basic gait information, you know, maybe like what patients would want to know, just, just kind of the neurology of, of gait 
and maybe go through just a little bit of some of the biomechanics, just some, make it pretty simple. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, I, I think there's a few things to consider. Gate, gate can be super complex and the math behind it is very complex in the modeling. And so if we simplify it down and, and just from a patient standpoint, what we know, uh, especially in a, in a brain injury, is that uh, movement is, is really important to create this brain-derived neurotropic factor, right? Mm -hmm. That helps create plasticity or help you create these changes. And so if we can have, watch you move and, and identify appropriate walking or inappropriate walking, if we can enhance that, then walking can become part of your rehab. And that's really important. So as, as an aside, that's why gait becomes so, so crucial. Yeah. For us, you know, if we, if we consider something that we, we look at all the time, one is just how much control somebody has when they're on one leg. And that represents 40% of every cycle of steps. So you're either on two feet or one foot in walking. And when you're on that one foot and the opposite leg is swinging, you need pretty good control of your, what we call your midline, right? Yep. And that's a, a good indicator of uh, many things, including balance. It could be predictive of knee pain or any other number of things. But it speaks to the strength, usually, of the hip and the pelvis. And that's uh, one of the key things we will analyze. Okay. The, the other one or two that we might look at is just as you're pushing off a, an adequate amount of ankle motion, a lot of people might have limited. And that can affect squatting and sitting and, and those type of things. Yeah. And then as you land, you know, we want to see that the knee bends adequately. And the importance of that is it's a motion called an eccentric motion, but it's how you decelerate. And I know you know far better than I, but the, that eccentric control comes from a part of the brain that, that is your basal ganglia is part of it, right? And it's a really crucial part of the brain. And so it's a neat window into how well they can actually have control, their ability to slow themselves down and, and load adequately. Perfect. And we can capture all that with spark motion and then Absolutely. Get, get more detailed with actually like breaking those phases down of gait and then and looking for specific markers yeah. or, or, or places to intervene. Yeah. So, I mean, for us, I mean, if we're working with a patient that has headaches or chronic neck pain or feels, you know, maybe they don't know where their body is in space or they feel slightly dizzy, we want to look at gait to see these, you know, markers of movement and then rehabilitate their gait to improve function. So when we improve gait, that could change your headaches. That could change Absolutely. your, you know, Absolutely. Could, I mean, think of the thing movements. you're told to do it all the time, every day, right? 10,000 steps or whatever it is. Yeah. And I know, again, as you know, better than I, but you know, our eyes shouldn't be dancing around as we're walking. Ideally we're fixed on the spot. Yeah. And if gates, gates affecting that, that could be very problematic. And Moreover, I mean, we are a connected system. Um, I think we, you know, it's, I don't want to be so esoteric to say every big toe relates to the brain or something. But on the other hand, this isn't just an ear or an eye or a head. I mean, it's a full system that is connected. And so why not evaluate something we do all day long every day and yep. see if we can enhance that? Absolutely. Sense. So in terms of rehabilitation of gait, I mean, are there, are there some simple things that, you know, you could recommend that you know, kind of holds true for a majority of people? Like what, what kind of things could people do at home to make them? Absolutely. Better? I think there's a few things. I mean, I, I, one is looking at actually strength in the foot. Um, there's some high value there because it, uh, we know if we can increase just by one pound per square inch, which isn't a lot, the strength under the big toe. Yeah. Um, will decrease fall risk by 10% or said differently, probably improve balance, right? And if 40% of our walking cycle is on one foot, then increasing the ability to be there on a stable place would be of value. And so I think toe exercises, and I say toe, but those muscles attach into the back of the leg. So they go into the calf area as well. But foot and toe exercises, I think, are really crucial. Okay. The, uh, the other thing to consider is most people, when they're on that one leg, don't have great control of their movement side to side through the hip. So strengthening the posterior hip musculature. So the glutes are, are usually yeah. of high value as well. So maybe doing some sort of like isometric glute activation exercise, like maybe a side lying, you know, hip up, leg out, trying to activate that glute muscle and hold it for a certain extended period of time. Absolutely. Make Absolutely. Some right. And then we need to do some sort of progression into what the task is. 
but mm-hmm. but that's a great place to start because it's safe. These patients, many times, as as you know, uh, or any patient, may not be as as comfortable doing more dynamic exercises, and so we can choose something that's safe, yeah, but that we can push them a little harder and uh, and get a good result. Yeah, so I mean, they could do some of these things on the floor. They could do them side lying and. You know, what I've seen is, you know, a lot of our patients with dysautonomia, they do really, really well with gait rehabilitation training. I mean, a lot of this circuitry is involved with complex mechanisms in the brainstem. So just working on, you know, just cross cord patterning, um, opposite arm, opposite leg, add in some dual tasking exercises where they have to say every other month, every other letter of the alphabet while they're doing this can be very, very helpful. And you know, just working gait can activate the cerebellum, activate the basal ganglia, the frontal lobe. And it's just something that's so simple that, that people can start working on, even if they're non-ambulatory, if they're just in a chair. Um, people, I think people get uh, bogged down in the details of, of gait. And I think it is important to appreciate and understand it. But I think if you, if you watch somebody walk on, on video and you, you have a search pattern, one or two things you may look for, like I said, do they load adequately or maybe their arms swing? Yeah. Then you can just build from that, right? And so the neat part is you don't have to make it any more complex than your, your base of knowledge around it, but you're looking for certain versus, I think some people get too far into the weeds of saying, are they pronating enough or supinating enough? And yeah. instead it's, you know, we can look for these major markers. And as you know, like dual tasking, I mean, yeah, gait will break down very quickly for many yeah. people. Yeah, And uh, capturing that on video is pretty cool because I think people kind of get a kick out of seeing that change. I mean, they feel it, but when they see it, they think that's incredible. I have no idea of it. But, yeah. And it helps sort of convince them of, of that, the value of that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot of very complex circuitry. I mean, yesterday I actually had a, a person in the office and when we would dual task them with gate, they would actually black out. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. So so you just kept doing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were behind them, obviously, trying to catch right. them. Right. I imagine it. Right. Isn't better involved with, you know, the frontal lobe and firing down and regulating your autonomics are very important. So when they were doing that, that gait pattern and then we had them say every other month, uh, basically, they became very dysautonomic and then didn't get that good perfusion to their head and then they were down. Well, I mean, if you think about in the, at least in the concussion research, I mean, one of the key, key ways to determine where to begin exercising somebody is that Buffalo concussion treadmill test. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's an exertional gait based test, right? So ideally if they can, they can walk and and you can, you can film it. I mean, there's so much value there um, in that, in this demographic, as you know. Yeah. So, so basically we want to look at time and single leg stance, time and double uh, double leg stance, stride length, arm swing, are people, you know, pulsing to one side when they're walking? What do they look like when they, when they do a task? Do, their, do they have hesitations? Do they start to break down? And then also very importantly, like what, what do their turns look like as they walk down and maybe turn back towards you? Because that can give you a little insight to maybe they have some sort of vestibular dysfunction or something going on with their cerebellum. You know, you'll see patients when they turn, they look like, you know, they look like Tin Man. They can't disassociate movement and, you know, they can't just move their head. They have to move their whole body, which can be a problem. And Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting because you mentioned a few things. Those things I think we can pick up with our eyes, the step length or the stride length, depending on what you're looking at, uh, those yeah. kind of things. Those happen a little quicker, at least research supports, a little quicker than our eye can pick up a- a- accurately. Yeah. And that's the importance of filming these things because the frame per second rate of that occurring versus what your eye can accurately pick up is, is not the same. Yeah. So, you know, filming this stuff really does allow you to then go back and say, actually, you know what, that they take a much larger step to their right than to their left or the stride is longer on the, or, or confirm or deny what you saw. Perfect. Um, but all those things, like you said, are so crucial to pick up. Well, let's, um, I'm, I'm just going to do a screen share here quick and just play just that short two minute video cool. of, of Spark. Nice. And yeah, so one second. So just as an aside to the group, um, you know, one of the other side things about Spark, and I know it's not a commercial for Spark, it's not meant to be, but we allow you to voice over videos and then send them to a patient with a HIPAA compliant cloud. So what that affords is if you have a patient that has something going on or homework or these TBI people that have trouble remembering things yeah. is you can, you can voice something over and send it to them. And then they have a, a, a picture of that or a commentary on it. So. The Spark Pro app. 
by Spark Motion is motion analysis technology built specifically for the iPad and soon for Android that is a full featured set of professional tools designed to enhance performance and it literally fits in the palm of your hand. We think it's pretty great. In fact, we think it's the best of its kind, but that's quite a claim. So maybe you'd like to know who we are. We're not computer guys or programmers. We're performance pros and medical practitioners. We're sports people, that's what we're good at. And we knew there has to be a better way, a more efficient way to do our jobs utilizing the latest mobile technology. And that's where the Spark Pro app came from. That idea plus a lot of research. We worked with other people like us, like you, who were looking for a better way to serve patients and athletes. They all thought Spark Pro was a great idea and they helped us make it even better. Then we took what we learned and teamed up with business professionals. So the Spark Pro app would be able to store your info in the cloud, a secure HIPAA compliant cloud that's rock solid, but easy to access from anywhere. And then all those people told us it was pretty great too. Now it's more than a great idea. Spark Pro is what we do. So how about you? If you're a professional sports franchise, a major hospital, or even a local golf pro or a youth coach, the Spark Pro Cloud means you can offer remote training and consultation for clients at any time, anywhere in the world, from anywhere in the world. The Spark Pro app is the only tablet-based motion analysis system built to be powerful and secure enough for industry-leading professionals, but accessible to anybody. All things considered, we like to think Spark Motion has really sparked the industry, revolutionizing how we capture and analyze movement. Give it a try and see what the power of Spark Pro can do for you. I don't think I've watched that in a really long time. I forget how much <laughs> sort of the, the journey we've been down. It's uh, thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Your, your hair was a little bit long. Right, totally. I was tingling totally. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that, was, that was great. I love stuff like that. So it's, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's, I, I think that was great. I mean, that hit all the major points that I wanted to hit on and uh, you did a great job of just, you know, making it simple for, for patients to kind of understand this stuff. So is there anything else you, that you wanted to add that you can think of? Well, I, th I think the neat part is, and again, in this sort of um, unusual time is that, uh, what one of the things Spark does allow is is the patient or prospective patient to upload videos, okay, um, through a variety of platforms, Dropbox, Google, or just send them to you. Yeah. And the neat part about that is when you are having sometimes some remote stuff or patients come a little further and it's hard to get back, you have the opportunity to ask them to refilm certain things. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's so neat we, for a we practitioner. Could have them, we could have them refilm and. Yeah. And you could do that anyway, but the neat part is you pull that into their profile. So yeah. it's now with their data and then you can voice it over and say, you know, what? actually, you know, Mrs. Jones, this has improved. Notice this, or in fact, notice this isn't as good as we'd like. And here's what we, we want to do. And so, yeah, um, we know, I think the patients prefer that at least our experience has been that over the um, written and or sort of handed out um, pre post sort of, Oh, you, you was better on DDK, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so that's the only other thing I, I, I think is important, at least during this time, that, that, that it facilitates a little bit of ease there. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Stodeholm. That was great. Dr. And uh, good to see you as always, yeah, man. Yeah, good to see you. Um, but yeah, this is a part of the, the August 3rd through 7th Tech and TBI series. Um, how, can we, how can we find you? Absolutely. So um, if you're interested, uh, it's it's. Uh, and I want to be sure about this because we have redone our, our site and you, you think I'd log on all the time and should be prepared for this. Yeah. Uh, but I want to just be sure that it, it didn't change on us. Um, but the website is, is um, two seconds, Jeremy, I think we did switch it. So okay. sorry. I can look too. So I just had it pulled up. I don't know if it was, it's sparkmotion.com. I wanted to make sure it was still .com. Yep, um, and and that's the best place to find us. We offer uh, sort of a 14 day trial and no okay. charge. And uh, and I'm sure if you have this event going on, uh, we can talk offline and we can create a, a code that will allow people to yeah. maybe extend that trial a little bit if they're okay. interested. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.